All right. Hello and welcome back. Let's see. Is this thing on? <laughs> Looks like it is. So, uh, welcome back, everyone. Welcome, you kids. And uh, thank you for tuning in. Uh, Mayor V, Wayne, I see you there. Nice to see you back. So, today. Once again, this is a Q&A session, a live Q&A session, all about you kids, the album, which is a collaborative album between you and me and uh, other you kids around the world. We're going to start with some music, as we always try to do. And last week I played something quite jazzy and low-key, and this week it's going to be the opposite. This is a song that nobody has heard except uh, people who are involved with the album. And uh, it's called Lucky in Love. Lucky in Love. And the reason I've chosen Lucky in Love is because it gives you a, a feeling of that bigger sound, that more, uh, that more rockin', raucous, epic sound. But I specifically want to show you a couple of things that are going on in the background that the UKEDS ensemble is going to um, hook into in the parts that they end up playing. You know, how, how do we have this huge sound on the, say, maybe the baritone ukulele, and, and then we have, you know, a whole bunch of people who want to play. How do they fit into that? Well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to give you an example of how that's going to work. So let's listen to the first little bit of Lucky in Love from the verse into the chorus, and then we'll stop. And then I'll show you um, what I mean by how these parts fit together. Let me know in the chat if this is too loud. Uh, I'm sorry if the, the balance isn't quite right. So here is uh, Lucky in Love. Here we go. I am counting on you tonight. Betting it all on love and letting it ride Red velvet sea, chandeliers Neon country songs ringing in my ears And our love is like a winning streak We could make more in a night than some make in a week Our love is like a spinning wheel Where it stops nobody knows All you know is what you feel Now every breath is a cigarette Every bed is the family Okay, so <laughs> that that's a little a little taste of that tune. It goes from like one note on a piano, dong, 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 dong. You know, literally, it builds from there into this massive snowball of sound, almost like a mushroom cloud of sound in the chorus. And if you if you listen to just the um, the uke parts in the chorus, there are these two uke parts playing in unison. They're playing the same notes, and they're playing the same notes as the bass, which is played on a synthesizer. Um, you'll hear just like everybody piling in on this very same finger. Uh, not finger, figure, sorry. Uh, maybe just with one finger. And just that part sounds like this. Again. 
So it's like everybody is playing together on that one finger. Uh, figure, <laughs> I keep saying that. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Like the, the ukes are playing it, the baritone ukes are playing it at this octave. The synth is playing it at this octave. And the uke heads are going to play it at this octave. And, and everybody is going to, like a triple decker bus, you know? And this is the part. It's just one note at a time. You know, that's all it is. But it's when it combines with the other parts that it really sounds mighty. And if you're if you're sitting there going, what about you know the high G? Do we need the high? Uh, do we need the low G? No, there's also a high G part that harmonizes with this. I think it's going to sound really great. So let me see if this works. If I play along with the um, the full track in the chorus and I play the uke part, you'll hear just a hint of you know, what's going to sound like with those uke head parts over top. So let's try that. I'm going to jump to the chorus here. I go in a night, then where it stops, here we go. Here nobody we go. knows. All you know is what you feel. Now every breath is a cigarette. Every breath is a family So what I'm trying to show is that there are these there are these parts that all kind of dovetail together and you might think when you first hear this the, the huge sound of these songs you might think well is there any room for me on this <laughs> and the the answer is yes and we're all going to work in layers together and it's really going to be great it's going to be really fun and uh, that's just one isolated example and the album is just full of these examples N not to mention um, all the singing that you can do if you feel like singing um, these choruses are really epic and I know you're gonna have fun singing them with me so there we go um, let's dive in to today's topic which is one of my favorite topics when it comes to NFTs and community and that is utility utility which is what you can actually do <laughs> with your UKED is this just a colorful little cartoon you know um, that you're paying money to collect sure well that's fine if you're the collector type um, but you know for the rest of us um, what, what do you get for your UKED and what can you do with it? So um, here we go. This is our welcome screen. <laughs> we're past this already. We're past welcome. We're past Q and A in May. You know where you are. Q and A in May. Thursdays at noon Pacific. There's one more left after this one. Uh, that one's going to be all about how to actually record your parts and submit them. You know by now what you kids is. It's a collaborative album by me and you. And you know that it's powered by. <laughs> 1,879 whimsical portraits of the ukulele, each one being a ticket to record on this album. You know that. That's why we're here. Let's do this. Um, we're at week number three, hidden behind my uh, picture there on screen. Week number three, utility now, utility later. We've got one left. That's recording and submitting audio on May 26th. And just to recap our key points from Q&A number two last week, Q&A number two was all about how to purchase a UKED. And I went to some pains to show you how easy it is. It's as easy as one, two, three, you know? <laughs> How's that for a sales pitch? It's as easy as one, two, three, but honestly it is. You browse the, the website, you add your UKED to the cart, and you check out. There's really nothing more complex than that. You do not have to have cryptocurrency. You do not have to have a crypto wallet, a digital wallet, 
Um, if you do have one, great, but you don't need it. You can log in and create a wish list to keep track of your favorite UKEDs. Uh, remember that doesn't reserve them, it just makes them easier to find later on. Um, as I said, if you already have a crypto wallet, you can add your crypto wallet address during checkout and we will just airdrop your NFT to you within 24 hours. Again, if you don't have a crypto wallet, it's absolutely no problem. You don't need one to participate. No matter how you choose to check out, uh, you will receive a high-res uh, UKED image by email instantly. Um, that's the one you want to use if you're going to like print a poster or a, a t-shirt or something and only you have that high-res version. And um, sp speaking of email, a few days before the next online rehearsal, you'll also receive an invitation with the link to that video rehearsal. So everything will be done, uh, all the communication at least, about the nuts and bolts of this will be done via email, just the way you'd expect. Okay, so that's the quick recap of uh, Q&A number two from last week. You can also watch that whole session. It's on my YouTube channel there if you want to check it out. But let's get to the main event for today, and that is utility. What you can and cannot do with your UKED. This is so, so important that we're on the same page and that we understand each other going into this, because this is one of the places where there could be some confusion or misunderstanding, and that's exactly why we're doing this now, and we're all going to get on the same page. Utility. So, UKED's utility, in other words, what you can do with your UKED, what you get from it, it falls into sort of three categories. The first one is merchandise. The second category is experiences, which I personally think is the most uh, important <laughs> and the most valuable. If, if, if I were you, if I'm looking at this and trying to decide if I want to buy a UKED, it's the experience of it all that really carries it for me. And the third is money. Notice I've said money, maybe. <laughs> and we'll talk about that in just a second. I really want to address the money thing because um, people who collect things, whether it's hockey cards or comic books or NFTs, you know, there is that sort of that little voice in your head in the background that says, um, and can I make money off of this? <laughs> and there are some opportunities to, to do that. Uh, don't get me wrong. Um, it's not the beating heart of this project. Um, and I don't want to um, lead you astray. I want to be very clear about what those opportunities are and what they aren't. So let's um, dive into the first thing there, which is merchandise, right? Everybody likes merch, uh, I think. UCAD owners get exclusive access to limited edition merchandise, like for example, hats and shirts and tote bags and exclusive vinyl. Check this out. I don't know if you can see me on the on the thing here. Here's my prototype UCAD's hat. First one off the press. Here we go. All right, this is just to make sure. This is the one that the uh, the lady's wearing in the picture there. Yeah, right. And it even comes in other colors. How's that one on me? You like that? What do you think? My color? UKED. Okay, where was I? These things really do exist. They're, these are embroidered in uh, six colors. It's kind of cool. It's nice. And that's just a sample of some of what we have in store. Now, I, I do want to be really clear about the merch. Um, it's not free merch, okay? Like, just super clear here. It's not free merch, it's discounted. We don't make any money off the exclusive merch. Um, the, the benefit of being a UKED is that you get access to the store where you can buy this stuff, and only UKEDs can order this merch. It's not available to the public, okay? It's not free, <laughs> but it is exclusive. Uh, shipping costs are paid by you. Um, we don't make any money on this uh, merch. It's there just to show that, you know, you're uh, you're part of the team. You know, you're part of this ensemble. Um, if you want to print your UCAD and make a poster out of that, that is not something that we are going to um, uh, provide to you because you can imagine what, it's, what it would be like to print almost 2,000, you know, art pieces and stock them somewhere. It, it would just be it kind of 
it just we don't have the, the facilities or the resources to do that but i will suggest places where you can get really high quality um posters and art pieces made there's a place in montreal called art of wear um, for canadians they also print um, high quality art on wood so you get this really cool wood panel with your uket on it and each piece of wood of course has a different grain to it so your piece is really has a unique feel to it i i think i might do that for for mine um, there's a place called Fine Art America, which is based in Chicago, which also does um, similar stuff. So I hope that um, I hope that answers questions about you know um, that category of merchandise. Merchandise. Let's go from there on to what I think is, like I said, the heart and soul of this project, which is the UKEDS experience. Right. This is the main thing that you get. You know, when you buy a UCAD, you get the experience of participating in this album. You know, your name will be in the credits. <laughs> your voice and or your ukulele will be on the album forever and ever. You know, this really is the main value that you get by participating in the project. Um, you also get the online workshop with me for every song so that we have these rehearsals and and you know what to do, you know what parts to play, and, and when. This is the, I would say, the main, uh, the main uh, you know, thing, that you get, the main product that, that, you, that you buy when you spend $187.90 on your UCAD. Okay? So, uh, now, <laughs> there, I, I love how this uh, little sort of teaser vinyl is on their screen right now. I would love to do uh, an exclusive short run of vinyl with the final um, the final mastered tracks on it. I think that would be so cool, and only you kids can uh, can buy this vinyl. I, I'm a big vinyl fan, and we listen to a lot of vinyl at home. I think it would sound great, and it would just be the topper for me. So I I haven't secured that. I have looked into it, and I think it's going to be possible. Um, and I'm just crossing my fingers that we can pull that off. That to me is going to be mm, just the cherry on top. Okay, let's go on to the third um, and maybe the most, uh, not controversial, but this category of money. You know, can I make money off my UCAD? I really want to just um, tackle this head on because we've had some questions about it. And um, it's a natural thing to think when you get into collecting something, co collecting something where there's a limited supply, where yours is a one of one edition um, and nobody else has it. Well, can I make money? So let me start by saying, again, the primary sort of return on your investment when you become a UKED is fun. That is the number one thing that you get, right? For your $187.90, it's the fun of being part of this project, okay? There is absolutely no guarantee that you will make any money from your UKED, okay? I just want to be really, really clear about that. If you are looking at this as purely a speculative investment and you're hoping that you'll be able to sell your UKED later on for more money, I cannot promise or guarantee any of that. I want to be very, 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 very extra super clear about that. Um, now it is important to know what you can and cannot do with your UKED art piece if you are interested in this, um, because I'm not going to stop you from, you know, trying to make uh, your 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 investment back or trying to make a return on your investment. So here's what you can do: you can sell your NFT down the road. Let's say we get some good press and all the UKEDs are sold. There's no more supply, and the demand goes up and you turn around and sell your NFT for more than $187.90, well, great. I'm happy for you and there's there's no shame in that. You know, that's absolutely, you're absolutely within your rights to sell your NFT and pass on your membership in the UKEDS Ensemble uh, to someone else. You can also gift it, uh, just if you're wondering. This only works though if you have the NFT. You, at this point, you have to actually figure out how to get a crypto wallet, and hold that NFT listed on a secondary marketplace and 
sell it to somebody, you know, but that's absolutely within your rights uh, to do. In fact, selling your NFT is probably the most likely way that you would make a couple of bucks on your UKED. There's also this really interesting area of commercial use. Um, and you can read more about this. Um, I'm pretty sure this is live at the moment. Uh, you can actually go to ukeds.com slash terms and you can actually read through there what rights you have to the artwork itself. It's really interesting. Um, and this is, we're following the trend in the NFT collectible world that says, um, you know, if you're going to participate in this project and in sort of invest your time and energy and money in a project like this, why not, um, why not give the UCAD holders some rights to the artwork itself? So for example, if you wanted to um, make some t-shirts with your UCAD on them, Maybe you own more than one UKED and you want to make a line of t-shirts and hoodies and things like that and sell those um, under your, your brand and that becomes your you know, uh, logo or something. That's great. You can do that. You can use your UKED, not other people's UKEDs, but the one or the ones that you own, you're able to use them commercially. Um, you might have a, a, a jam group or, or a band and you're looking for a mascot. Well, use your UKED. You're allowed to do that. You might have, a, you might be a luthier and you're making ukuleles and you're looking for a logo or, um, or something like that. You can use your UKED as part of your marketing and as part of your brand if you own that NFT. Um, so that's what I mean by commercial use. There are some limitations to that, and that's all outlined in the uh, in the terms. If you're if you're thinking that way, I, I would suggest you dig into those terms. They're pretty clearly laid out in like well plain English, you know, as plain English as you can get in a in a legal you know terms and conditions. But um, those are the two ways that you can look to monetize your own NFT or your own UKED. Here's what you can't do. <laughs> I love. Um, LeBlanc Papillon says, I'll never sell. <laughs> yeah, hodl that you kid. Way to go. Uh, here's what you cannot do um, or what you're not entitled to. And I just want to be really straight about this. Um, royalties. We're not going to uh, pay you a split of the royalties that come in from the streaming or the placement of songs on the album. Um, can you imagine... <laughs> you know, cutting checks to 1,879 people for one eighteen hundredth of 0 0.0003 of a dollar, you know, every time there's a, there's a stream, it's just the mind boggles, you know, at the, at the logistics of keeping track of all of that. And for really for pennies, like, unless these just go through the roof and we get literally a billion you know, a billion streams on, on Spotify, um, it's going to be pennies. Uh, and the amount of administration to make that happen is almost, you know, it's just mind boggling. So you, you won't be receiving, you know, a cut of streaming royalties or, um, or, or any royalties based on the, on the, on the streaming, the playing or the placement of these songs. Okay. You also don't get um, song rights, so you don't get a cut of the copyright to the songs themselves or the publishing rights. Um, there's, uh, as I mentioned, some some limitations to um, your artwork as well. And what I mean by that is, you can use your UKED. Let's say, look at the one that gold one in the uh, in the corner down below there. If I put that on a T-shirt, that's fine. Um, but I don't, I don't own the individual pieces, the attributes. We call them attributes. They're like, for example, the little, um, oh, you can't see it on your screen, but like if it has a necklace or if it has a hat or if it has a certain mustache or something, you don't individually own those components of the artwork. You only own that particular combination of the attributes. And, and that's... That makes sense because um, we don't want any one person to be able to say limit anyone else's ability to use their UKED because they say, oh, well, 
I own the mustache, so you can't use the mustache. You know? It's like, well, no, you own the combination, the unique combination of those attributes, but you do not individually own the attributes uh, in, in a copyrighted way. And so we could still generate more UKEDs down the road um, based on the same attributes if we wanted to. We're actually not planning to do that, but I want to make it really clear that what you own is the unique combination of attributes, not the attributes themselves. I know that sounds a bit abstract, but it's really important to understand so that we don't have um, confusion and uh, heartache <laughs> you know, later on. Again, this is all outlined in that Terms and Conditions. And finally, trademark. Um, the trademark UKEDs is not something that you will have rights to. Uh, you can use your UKED with your own trademark, but remember trademarks like Nike or you know, uh, Apple or whatever, um, those are in place to protect the customer, you know, the consumer, so that the consumer knows the origin of a particular product. So if you start using UKEDS and you put out an album called, uh, you know, UKEDS volume, you know, volume six by, you know, Joe Bloggs, um, it's confusing to the to the um, to the buyer because they don't know where that UKEDS has come from. They need to know that UKEDS is coming from, in this case, me and my business, and that's to protect the um, the consumer down the road. So that's why you're not you know you're not entitled to use um, the trademark UKEDS um, except under some special conditions that are outlined in, in the terms. If you have a non-commercial um, project or a charity project, um, there might be ways to negotiate the use of it. I just want to put that out there. This is, by the way, not my favorite thing to talk about, if you can, you know, if you notice. Um, but it's important to talk about this stuff um, because it just avoids confusion later on. So that's the bulk of it. That's the hard stuff right there. Whew. <laughs> it was relatively painless, but it's a real mouthful. So thank you for um, being so patient. Can we please move on to a different slide? Yes, let's go. Let's talk about the future. This is much more fun. Uh, okay, so UCAD owners um, will have long-term benefits beyond the recording of the UCAD's album. I think this is something we've hinted at before, but I want to make really clear because it's part of the utility, right, that you get with your UCAD. Um, and these long-term benefits might include things like uh, discounts on workshops, um, in-person events of, of many kinds, concerts, more exclusive merch, you know, down the road, and other things that we maybe haven't even dreamt of yet. Um, those future benefits are part of what makes this project exciting um, because I'm always thinking about the music. I also think about future recording projects that we can do together. You know, I've got several singles that don't really belong on an album. I'd love to get the band back together and release a single down the road, you know, that's not part of the UKEDS album, but that's just featuring the UKEDS, <laughs> you know? Um, so the future has, you know, a lot of potential um, for fun. And uh, that's partly why we've done this as an NFT project and not just as a simple ticket to one event and then, you know, one and done and it's over. Um, some folks have asked, uh, particularly on um, Twitter, I've got a couple of messages from people saying, why use NFTs at all? Why not just use a conventional ticketing system? And what we're looking at here, this slide, the future, is part of the answer to that. Um, it's because these NFTs, these passes, these, you know, membership tokens have a life beyond this album uh, and potentially a lot of life beyond this album in a way that a, a ticket, which is just, you know, a spreadsheet on my computer, um, just doesn't have those uh, that same potential for you to transfer or sell or gift um, your NFT to the next generation, you know, of, of you kids. That is part of the reason that we decided to do this as an NFT project. So, whew, 
there we go. Let's sum up the key points from today. Um, key point number one, as a UCAD owner, your main return on investment, quote unquote, I'm going to put big quote unquote here for um, any you know regulatory bodies who are watching, uh, your main return on investment is the fun of supporting and participating in the album production and release. Remember, you do not even have to play on this album to want to grab a UCAD and support the the community that's you know popping up around these songs um, second thing you are welcome to sell your UCAD nft or use it for commercial purposes right this is the part I talked about in the money slide of course this is subject to the UCAD's terms and conditions but that is within your rights and that for some people is going to be really exciting you know sell it or you know buy a few and sell one um, and use it for commercial purposes. You know, if I had more time in a day, I'd love to do a series of t-shirts, you know, that were featuring my, my UCAD or whatnot. Okay, so UCAD owners get exclusive access to UCAD's merchandise. Like for example, this prototype that does not fit over your headphones, just so you know. These items are discounted, but they are not free. What you get, the value that you get is the exclusive access um, where the store is not actually available to the general public. And finally, owning a UCAD does not grant the owner any rights with respect to the musical compositions, really important to understand, um, or with respect to the UCAD's trademarks or the individual attributes of their UCAD. Now, I, I've hope, I hope that I've did, done my best there to make that clear and what that means and why we've made those decisions. Um, now would be a good time to uh, ask any questions that you might have about that or anything related to the project. I'm going to go back here to... There we go. There I am. Okay, let me see if there are any um, questions that are just already waiting in the chat here. Okay. Steven says, maybe we should do a seven inch single. Oh, a seven inch with the, the first single and a B side. Ooh, we're talking vinyl here. I love it when you talk vinyl. <laughs> that would be cool. That, you know, that's, I don't know if you're being serious or not. I think you are being serious and I like that. Um, I love the idea of having a single and a B side. We could, uh, that's food for thought. I like it. Uh, okay, fun is good. Yes, Moses, fun is good. Um, let's, <laughs> Mary v actually brings up a really good point here. She says, sooner or later, later <laughs> every one of us will die. <laughs> and what happens to our UCAD after that? Well, Mary v, I'm glad you mentioned that because that does play into what I was saying about um, you know, why we chose to do an NFT project as opposed to a regular, you know, your name on a spreadsheet kind of a project. The thing is, NFTs are giftable and portable, sellable. They can move around. They become, they sort of have a life of their own. And so, although I know that many people in this project are going to start not holding the UCAD as, a, as, a, as an NFT, hopefully within the next two, three years, that becomes much more common and then you will have the ability to transfer it or gift it or sell it and and hopefully you know i'm saying this for myself hopefully i can you know yeah i can leave my uked to my son you know when i'm gone so hopefully these things will have a life beyond us but isn't, isn't that a isn't that an interesting idea okay all right um <laughs> Okay, oh, Susanna says, dogs ate my cable. That's terrible, Susanna. I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that. I'm finally here, she says. She's new to crypto, so is there a specific one we should choose or use? Um, well, if you're new to crypto, the I, I will say for those of you who are interested in, in how it's working behind the scenes, uh, and there this is on the website already, you can have a look, the blockchain that we're um, using 
And by the way, blockchain is just a fancy word for a network of computers. <laughs> you know, if they called it the network chain, everybody everybody would be like, well, what's the big deal? But blockchain, you know, sounds so, I don't know, futuristic and, and sort of obtuse. But it's really just a network of computers who are all communicating to verify a transaction. I mean, I hate to take the the air out of it, but like, that's all it is. And so the network that we are using is called Polygon. And Polygon, each network has its own currency, its own crypto, right? And um, it's almost like um, these networks, you can, you can think of a blockchain like a country. So each country has its own currency. And you can move between countries uh, but when you do that, you have to go through an exchange, right? You ha I have to go, when I go to the States, I go and I buy some USD, some US cash so that I have some in my pocket so I can tip the cabbie and stuff like that. Um, we're really familiar with that. That's not anything new or unusual. Um, and it's the very same thing in blockchain and in the crypto world. Each blockchain is like a country that has its own currency and they call that a cryptocurrency. And if you want to move from one blockchain to another, you can do that, except you have to go through an exchange <laughs> and then get some of the other currency if you want to buy something that's over there. Uh, and so this, this project, UKEDS, is living in the country called Polygon. And Polygon, we've chosen Polygon because it has extremely low transaction fees and because it has a, a, a very forward-thinking and aggressive environmental strategy in place and I you know I know we all agree that that's important and we've heard horror stories of, of uh, crypto projects and NFT projects using up you know more energy in one day than the average UK citizen I think it was would use in 30 years something just outrageous like this you know uh, those are chains like Bitcoin and Ethereum which use a fairly already outdated way of doing this that burns a ton of energy. Polygon is one of the chains that not use that system. And so um, that's why we've, one of the reasons why we've chosen that. So uh, the Polygon cryptocurrency is called Matic, M-A-T-I-C, Matic. You do not need it to participate in this, um, in this project, but if you're interested in how that all works, look up Polygon and the Matic currency. That is where your NFT will actually be um, will be created, is on that network. Okay. Um, Camille says, I missed the significance of 1879. Woo! Okay. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. Why, why am I wearing a shirt that says 1879? And why are there 1,879 UKEDs? Um, for those who aren't uh, what I would call deep nerds uh, in the ukulele world, uh, you may not know that 1879 was the year in which the ancestors of the ukulele uh, from Portuguese Madeira arrived in Hawaii. And when they did, the Hawaiians heard this sound for the first time, and within a few years, the ukulele was the national instrument of Hawaii. So that August um, 23rd, 1879, when, those, when that boat, the Ravenscrag, arrived in Hawaii with the first examples of these instruments, we sort of consider that the spiritual birth of the ukulele, which is why 1879 is uh, such a big deal in ukulele circles. So. Camille, I'm so glad you asked that because I'm sure you weren't the only one wondering. Okay, Wayne says, I don't understand the rights to the individual attributes of a UKED. That, that's a good question. I know that's quite abstract. Um, and, and I did try to clarify, Wayne, and I know I might be going back in this chat past that point. But um, it's, it's like, I don't know how, how to say this. Um, you, how, how do we say this in, in a way that makes sense? Um, it's like you, it's like you own, you own the atom, but you don't own the electrons and the nucleus and the protons. You couldn't go away and like generate new UKEDs 
based on yours. You couldn't disassemble your UCAD and then generate others based on that um, because the copyright to the individual pieces is still owned by us, right? And, and that's partly to prevent people blocking other people from uh, using a UCAD that might be similar to theirs or that might have the same mouth and necklace. Well, the reality is um, individual holders only have um, ownership of that particular iteration of uh, a UCAD. They don't own all the constituent parts um, and couldn't generate new works based on those. <laughs> I know that's a hard one to explain, but I hope that makes it a little bit more clear. Okay. Okay, let's go. Oh, I see. There's some discussion about 1879. Thank you, Hanno. You clarified that even before I did. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Lori says, how about some clear vinyl with the UKED picture on the disc? Woo -hoo -hoo. Would that be stylish or what? Yes. That would be very stylish. We'll see what we can do. I love it. All right. Barry says, uh, you know, on my uh, my diatribe there about blockchain, um, he says blockchain can be thought of as a network of computers, but it is in fact more complex than that because there is a whole background of software based on some advanced computer science theory. Barry, you are 100% correct. <laughs> it is more complex than the way I tried to describe it. Uh, what I'm trying to do is... Uh, get people in the door uh, without sounding really scary. There's definitely more to it than saying it's just a network of computers. It is not just a network of computers, but certainly it's the, the, the very most sort of broad stroke of understanding what um, a blockchain is. I, I'll also say, I'm at the risk of losing people here, I, uh, I will say that I didn't actually get interested in blockchain or cryptocurrency a friend of mine told me about uh, an actually an ukulele friend of mine, um, me cryptocurrency you know, years ago i probably should have listened you know, maybe it was more like 10 years ago I, I i'm not just to be totally honest with you and i didn't get interested in any of this until i realized that um that blockchain is separate from crypto. <laughs> uh, suddenly I became interested because blockchain is just sort of like the spinal column that everything is based, that, that everything is built on. Cryptocurrency is just one application of blockchain. Blockchain is the sort of, um, it's the engine that runs stuff like crypto. And I'm just not that interested in crypto. To be honest, I, I I know some people here will be really into crypto and you know fill your boots. It's just not my thing. But the engine that is blockchain that can run all sorts of other things is very interesting to me. When we talk about music collaboration, community building, um, it's kind of like you know my my wife um, and she has one of these uh, stand mixers in the kitchen. You know this like KitchenAid thing. And I thought all, all it was good for was like making cake batter with the little, uh, you know, beaters. And then she showed me that you can actually take the front off and you can plug in like a whole bunch of different things. Like this one grinds up any uh, like grains into flour and, and you can add all these attachments. Basically all the stand mixer is, is just this engine <laughs> that just turns and whatever you want to plug into it, it makes it work. Blockchain is a bit like that. And crypto is only one little thing that you've plugged in. It, it powers cryptocurrency, but it can power so much. And I think that that was the turning point for me when I realized that this wasn't just about crypto and, and you sort of making money out of money, or, you know, which is, you know, I'm not going to stop say people shouldn't do that, but it's not uh, what gets me up in the morning. So, okay. So Rob says... Um, how is the whole project going? Uh, Rob, just to be really clear, we haven't started yet. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm actually really glad you asked that question because um, some people have asked me that and uh, we actually haven't started. This is this is pre, uh, pre-release, pre you know, because June 1st is the day when you can go in and actually buy one. And this whole month has just been about having a discussion. This whole month has just been about Q&A and warming up to the idea. So how is it going so far? I think it's going great because we're <laughs> we've got lots of good questions and I think people are really getting excited about it. Camille says, so no sneak peeks until June 1st? Ah, Camille, I'm so glad you asked. I almost forgot. We have found a way to get you in there. We found a way to get you in there um, before June 1st, I'm happy to say. And you will get in there, if I'm not mistaken, Chris is here, our moderator, my collaborator uh, in all things UKED. He's here today. Chris, I think we're going to get them in there May 26th, which is a week from today. You, we, you'll be able to go in and have a look. You won't be able to buy anything, but you'll be able to go in and sort of uh, earmark, I guess, or add the ones that you like onto your wish list for a whole almost week until June 1st. So. Camille, yes, sneak peeks starting um, May 26th. I'll, I'll send out an email so everybody knows about it. Uh, it. Larry says, this is a great point, Larry. It might be useful in understanding attributes, going back to Wayne's question about attributes, to summarize how you created those UKEDs. Th that's, that's a really great question, um, or good point, thank you. Um, the UKEDs, just so you understand, they're created as a series of um, layers and those layers are basically put into a bingo machine <laughs> and all just jumbled up. So I created like, well, I mean, I created all of the artwork, but in a nonlinear way, meaning that um, I didn't individually sit down and, and draw every single one from start to finish. I created a whole bunch of ukulele bodies, chose the colors. Then I created a whole bunch of hats and hair um, those are all part of one series, uh, one group, I guess, of attributes. Then eyes, uh, then I created all the mouths, and um, and then you sort of, you, you, you use a software program to say, now, jumble these up and uh, make 1,879 unique renderings of these attributes. And so that's what I mean by attributes. It's the individual components. Now, it worked out really well so that when you look at them you don't necessarily see the individual attributes because they blend nicely together um, but that's what I mean by individual attributes so uh, Larry that's a, a really good point um, Kanaka has a has a good analogy here it's like you ho you own the whole bike yes right but you can't sell the individual components of the bike <laughs> that's another way to put it uh, it's probably better than my atomic analogy. Thank you. Um, Valerie says, if you buy an NFT UKED, do you also get an email with the high res image for printing right away? Yes, 100%. Whether you buy it as an NFT or whether you buy it as a conventional purchase, the way you would buy a stand mixer from uh, an online store, no matter what, you get your high res 4000 by 4000 pixel image immediately after you purchase it. Okay. Maravi says, could we use, um, could the UKED picture be thought of as like an avatar of us? Uh, or is it something more? Yeah, the avatar, I've already started using mine, the one that I've picked up for me. I've already started using it on Twitter. It's my avatar on Twitter and I think Facebook as well. So that's a really common use for these kind of, um, square art pieces uh, and you're certainly welcome to do that and you and you saw on the mock-up cover of the vinyl how it had you know all the squares on it and yeah in a sense they your UKED represents you and you know I, I when I was choosing mine I do I wasn't looking for the one that looked like me because you know <laughs> they don't really look like people um, I was looking for the one that 
kind of resonated with me in a way that I couldn't explain and just said to me, yeah, I'm, it, it was like going to the, like an animal shelter, you know, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, it was, it was like going in and looking at all these like stray dogs or something and saying, you know, which one do I want to take home? It wasn't, which one looks like me? It was like, which one just like looks at me with those eyes and I say, I have to take you home, you know, I have to take <laughs> <laughs> that's how I chose my UK head and I, I do think it's kind of a reflection of me even though it doesn't look like me um, yes Barry thumbs up again to your um, clarification on the on the blockchain I totally I totally hear you and uh, you're right to point out that uh, it is a little more nuanced than than what I was saying okay let's see my uh, My uh, my dog ate my cable, right, Susanna? Somebody disconnected my chat here, so I'm just going to log back in. My dog ate my cable. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm back. Um, oh, yeah, Hanno has a good point here. Hanno says, I'm surprised that so few questions are asked about the part of the project that has to do with the music. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a really good point, Hanno. Um, uh, this really, for me at least, everything comes back to the music. It's all about the music. I'm always asking, you know, what is what does that have to do with music? You know, what does blockchain have to do with music? If it has something to do with music, I'm in. Hmm, probably not. Um, and I think probably next week we are going to get more into that musical aspect because next week is. The, our final session before the launch and it really will focus on how to record your parts how to send your audio files we can't help but talk more about the music um, as we get closer to launch um, I think there's just so much else that's connected to this project that you know um, we know we're gonna get to the music we know that's sort of the prize at the end of the tunnel um, but uh, but I, I agree, I agree. I, I'm looking forward to the point where we can really focus on the music and not um, and not all these uh, nuts and bolts. But uh, but this has been a great few weeks of conversation and I, I'm, I'm really glad we've done it in this way. Uh, Steven says, you have written the music, right? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, hmm. I better write some songs. Um, yes, I have written the music and the songs are ready to go, like they're ready to rock. Uh, you have heard some. I will say that I fully expect parts of the songs to evolve as we get people playing on them. I, I just know that's going to happen. So I'm not ready to sort of say, well, here's the final version and all you have to do is, you know, this, this and this. I really think that once you guys start playing on it, the, the songs will kind of respond. Um, in kind you know I, I fully expect that to happen so the songs are written the lyrics are written the demos are recorded uh, a lot of the parts are recorded but um they're still malleable you know and that's part of the fun okay um akash said i'm also interested in the knowledge which i would acquire about nfts through this project uh crypto and blockchain all that tech while having fun through our beloved ukulele <laughs> it's like the icing on the cake for me akash thank you so much i, I think i think that's a, a really nice way to say it um this is ultimately about music and ukulele and community but isn't it fun that we get to explore this new sort of emerging world um through the ukulele the ukulele is just this vehicle for ex for exploration always has been that for me uh, and it's taken me to some wild places, and and it will continue to do that. So I'm right with you, Akash. Thank you. Okay, Laurie says, thumbs up to preview week for you kids. Yes, that's coming, uh, starting on the 26th. You will hear all about that. Um, oh, Camille says, that's so cool that you made the artwork. I thought you hired a graphic artist to create them. <laughs> you know what? Uh, I think we have time for one more story. Um, I tried. I actually did try. Chris will, Chris will back me up on this. I really did try to hire somebody to do these UKIDs. Um, and he did a great job. But 
he only made two, I think he did three of them. We commissioned an artist to do three of these and it took so long. And I, I just knew that if we hired it out, we would never get this thing done, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I just thought, I've always been interested in this kind of generative art. That's the name for stuff where you make attributes and then you work with the uh, technology to sort of assemble the final products. Generative art. Um, I've always been interested in generative music as well. I'll just go for it. So, uh, so yeah. And, and I also think it makes it a little more personal that the, the music and the art are sort of bound together um, because they're coming from you know, one place. Okay, uh, great. I'm, I'm just going to skip down here. Uh, <laughs> I have to say that it, Susanna's comment here, she says, maybe on the next round, we can each contribute attributes. <laughs> maybe. That could be fun. I'm not saying that we won't do more uh, generative art, but I kind of think that this first round of UKEDS is sort of special. And yeah, there might be some fun stuff that we can do um, to expand the art collection, you know, as we go. Okay. Great. Thank you for all the nice comments, everybody. Thumbs up. Um, <laughs> I think we got time for two more here. Um, what happens, says Nance, what happens when everybody wants the same 10 UKEDs? <laughs> this is an interesting question. I don't quite know the answer to this. There will no doubt be some that will be more popular than others. And remember, there's only one of each. So all I could say is get in there on the preview week, get your wish list, put more than one on your wish list. You know, I think, I think, I know you'll be able to find more than one that you'd be perfectly happy to adopt. Um, there are plenty of you kids in the sea and uh, hopefully you can put a few, you know, half a dozen maybe on your wish list. And that way, if one of them gets sold before you get to it, you know, it's not the end of the world. And the second thing, of course, is just be there or be square right on, right on time, June 1st at noon, um, noon Pacific. And, uh, and we'll see what happens there, 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 you know, I can't promise that you'll get exactly the one that you want. Um, but if you're there right on time, your chances are better. Okay. Um, uh, sounds like great fun, says St Stephen, and very educational musically. I agree. For me as well, I'm learning lots. And um, uh, let's see. Lori says, "Couldn't we alter our UKEDs?" Great question, Lori. And this is this is covered in the terms and conditions. Which, if you're interested in using your UKED commercially, I really hope you'll check out. There are some things that are allowed under those terms and conditions some alterations or corrections um, in order for them to fit in a particular media that you needed to fit in. For example, if you were doing a, a t-shirt of your UKED, but you didn't want, say, like the, 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 the pink background to be on the t-shirt, if you just wanted to isolate the UKED, you would have pr permission to uh, delete the background or to make it transparent. And that's provided for. Those small alterations or corrections are provided for in the agreement. Um, to actually pull it apart and start creating a new series of UKEDs from yours is not allowed. So I just, you know, want to be really clear on that. And, you know, if you're not sure, just ask. We'll figure it out. Okay. Let's end with... Uh, Yes, Eukalelia says, this, this will be the last one for today. Uh, Eukalelia says, is this the first project of its kind? Hmm, that is a great question. The answer is, I think so. Um, I, can see, I can say one thing for a fact, and that is, it's definitely the first ukulele project of its kind. Um, and it might just be the first collaborative music NFT powered community project ever. Now I'm, you know, I haven't everywhere on the internet to make sure that that's true. Um, but it may well be that this is the first time that NFTs 
artwork, uh, recording, in a distributed ensemble have been used in this way. I do not know of any other projects that have ever done this. Um, if you find one, I'm all ears because I'd like to know if, you know, if we are um, the first to set foot in this new world. I I'd like to think so. Um, if, if we're not the first, then we must be, <laughs> if we're not the Neil Armstrong, we're at least the Buzz Aldrin of this new world of, you know, community music making on, on this scale. So I'd like to think that we are the first project of this kind. And uh, until we're proven otherwise, let's say that we are. <laughs> so thank you everybody for another really interesting session. All those questions and comments. Wow. I mean, this is really, this is really happening. And I'm, I'm just so thrilled that you're excited and that uh, you're here to be part of it and that you're showing up for the music, you're showing up for the art, you're showing up for the community. And we haven't even started yet. You know, uh, we're, we're, we're just getting the wheels turning and this is going to be great. So uh, thank you so much and tune in again, right? Next Thursday, May 26th at noon Pacific uh, for our final session before the launch. And uh, we'll do it all again this time next week. Thanks everybody. Have a good one. Bye for now.